Intercultural, multicultural, international, multi-ethnic, sometimes these terms can seem meaningless because they're so broad. None of us come purely from one culture or nation. And guarding against being too exclusive, it's hard to know where to draw the line between these terms. Children's literature is inherently intercultural. Within families, where you live or visit, our job is to look for, at how cultures, ethnicities, and other nationalities are represented and how this literature can be used to alter viewpoints and perspectives. Parents, educators, and others want literature that matches the skin tones in their classroom and neighborhood. What is the value of diversity? Our multicultural goal is prejudice reduction. Before that can happen, kids need the historical perspective of the prejudice. They need to understand where it comes from. What are some of the benefits of this genre of literature? Foster an awareness, understanding, and appreciation of people who seem at first glance different from the reader. Present a positive and reassuring representation of a reader's own cultural group. Introduce readers to the literary traditions of different world cultures or cultural groups with a specific nation. One activity is to use brown and white eggs. Ask the children to tell you how they are different in color, size, shape. Then using clear bowls, break the eggs open and ask the children to tell you what they see. The results, despite the obvious differences, are we are all built the same on the inside, which is what makes us human beings. Multicultural literature celebrates the diversity of the people who represent our communities, our country, and our world. International literature serves as a vehicle for learning more about the world, thus holding the promise of preserving and extending world peace. Remember when we studied traditional tales that I talked about their crossing cultural boundaries? I know, how could you forget? I said it enough. Go to worldoftales.com, W-O-R-L-D-O-F, T-A-L-E-S dot com and learn more about different folk tales that retain the characteristics of the culture, folklore, and customs of the people from which they originated. Multicultural books ought to measure up to the criteria used to judge literature in general. It should be of a high literary quality. No distortions or omissions of history. Look for various perspectives to be represented. Stereotyping. There are no negative or inaccurate stereotypes of the ethnic group being portrayed. Loaded words. There are no derogatory overtones to the words used to describe the characters and culture, such as savage, primitive, lazy, or backward. Lifestyles. The lifestyles of the characters are genuine and complex, not oversimplified or generalized. Remember, a single book may not adequately portray a group of people. Dialogue, the characters use speech that accurately represents their traditional their oral tradition. Standards of success, the characters are strong and independent, not helpless or in need of the assistance of a white authority figure. Characters do not have to exhibit extraordinary qualities or do more than a white character to gain acceptance and approval. The role of females, elders, and family. Women and the elderly are portrayed accurately within their culture. The significance of family is portrayed accurately for the culture also. Illustrations. The illustrations do not generalize about or include stereotypes of a cultural group and its people. The characters are depicted as genuine individuals. Characters of the same ethnic group do not all look alike, but show a variety of physical attributes. Relationships between characters from different cultures. Minority characters are leaders within their community and solve their own problems. Whites do not possess the power while cultural minorities play a supporting or subservient role. Julius Lester explains that his story is a retelling of Little Black Sambo story written by Helen Bannerman in 1899. Bannerman's story was written for her daughters when she was living in India. It's about a child named Sambo who outsmarts some tigers and brings home a pot of butter for his mother to make pancakes. 
When the story was brought to America at the turn of the last century, it was used to fuel stereotypes of African Americans and has been considered racist for many years. There is some controversy over a couple of rewrites of the story, and many people still associate the Sambo character with racist depictions of blacks. Lester says, however, the story transcended its stereotypes. For almost a century, children have enjoyed it. Jerry Pinckney and I read the story as children and recognized that Sambo was a black hero, but his name and how he was depicted took away his heroic status. What other story had I read at age seven and remembered for fifty years? There was obviously an abiding truth in the story, despite itself. In Lesser's retelling of the story, Sam and the Tigers, Sam is clever, creative, thoughtful, joyful, and courageous. He claims his outlandishly colored clothing as expressions of his spirit. His parents allow him to make choices in the marketplace and live with the responsibility entailed. When faced with hungry tigers, Sam is able to outwit them and save himself from being eaten. He then manages to avoid further confrontation and successfully regains his prized clothing as the tigers turn on each other. Sam hurries on to school as the tigers chase each other into a blur of melted butter. On his way home, he has the presence of mind to collect the butter and bring it home to his mother to make into pancakes for the whole neighborhood to enjoy. Lester's stories follows the original Sambo closely, but the language and illustrations are filled with dignity and grace. This is a wise tale that will encourage children to go out into the wide world and come home triumphant. Heroes and her heroines and heroes. Heroines and heroes are accurately defined according to the concepts and struggles for justice appropriate to their cultural group. They are not those who avoid conflict with and thus benefit the white majority. Copyright date. During the mid and late 1960s, most books on minority themes were written by white authors and reflected a white, middle class, mainstream point of view. More recently, beginning in the 1970s, books began to reflect a pluralistic society. The copyright date of a book may be one clue as to the possible biases to be found within it. One cultural acti multicultural activity that you could do is have clothing from different cultures in a dress-up area in your room. Just demonstrate how they are worn and why a certain culture dresses the way they do. Your librarian can help you find books to read to the children on all the different cultures. We cannot begin too early to give our children a multicultural perspective. Literature can be one of the most powerful tools for combating the ignorance that breeds the mistrust or fear of people who are not like us.